All right, well, here we are with the last video I'm going to make on this uh, Mexican photography of the uh, uh, Mexican Revolution. This, of course, is going to be just a video on some of the equipment that I have. Some that uh, uh, is original and some that uh, I had to make. So, first of all, let me begin by showing you a little... Like, uh, this is basically what the infantry would be wearing. This is, of course, French. But uh, this is what the Mexican infantry was wearing. So, this is a good... Uh, it's a nice reproduction and uh, not very expensive so if you're doing a reenactment of that you can do that now in some pictures I have seen the uh, the bill here actually longer so if you if you notice that in some pictures uh, it's still basically the same hat now here are some of the leggings that I've seen in uh, these are American but if you know some of the history of what was going on down there they uh, they bought a lot of American stuff a lot of American stuff so it would loop around and uh, you saw the artillery have this quite a bit and uh, I'm not sure if I saw the cavalry have it too much. But anyway, this one that looped around here, it would come out and uh, and connect to the bottom one. Then you have this one on top. So this one is original from that time period. It is American, but like I said, a, a lot of the equipment that they had was um, American. Now, these here, I bought in Mexico. Sometimes they're called uh, bandoleras, bandoleros, or cananas. And this one is from a friend of mine who knows about leather, told me this is original. Or at least it's, it's uh, from the 30s or even, even from the revolution. This rear part, however, has been replaced. Um, you can just uh, tell by the, the way that it smells, the way that it looks. And uh, that was definitely a, a replacement part here. Got pretty fancy here. It's got this sort of cloth. I don't know how that works out. I don't know how the heck they got that in there. But it's pretty fancy. I'm not sure what caliber this is. It could be easily 7 millimeter, But uh, it's too fragile for me to start sticking bullets in there but throughout the whole thing it's got this like cloth in there i have no idea how the heck they got that in there maybe they put a groove in it and they put some glue in it um so that's pretty neat i paid a uh, hundred bucks for each one at uh, the same shop that i got uh, the postcard from Different buckle, but same decoration. And uh, you can see the inside, how they did that. So the inside, they zigzagged it on top. And on the bottom, hopefully you can see that. On the bottom, they just kind of like looped it, looped it through the holes that they cut. But the top, they sewed in there. So again, this is original. 99% sure it's original. And as I mentioned before, the one particular type of cartridge belt that you always saw in the movies was something that actually looked like this. If you look at it, If you look closely, they had double buckles in the front. And as I mentioned before, the Schiffer book on the German colonial uniforms has this as
as the number four version. But uh, I've never been able to find any pictures. And you saw my four books and on the internet and other pic other. Actually, I have another book in Spanish. Um, but you never see this in any, any, any picture. And then somebody told me recently that uh, this year, or this last year, I'm sorry, 2020, that uh, it looks more like they were using those in the 40s or, or even definitely after the, the, the Civil War. And so when I was doing my uniform, I was going by the movies. So I made this thing. I made this thing look, uh, having looked at the, at the movies. The Mexican, the Mexican version. Um, I'm not even sure if the American version gives you this much detail, but uh, I made all this, sewed it by hand, and this is a very, 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 very Schutztruppe, German West Africa uh, style of cartridge belt. And uh, as I mentioned before, since you never really saw that. Um, cartridge belt in any pictures that I've ever seen what you really did see was a lot of these a lot of this type of cartridge belt and um, mine's kind of crude it's a bit crude looking but uh, I had some other ones I think I sold them to somebody or other that had a tab over and they looked a little bit nicer because the threading here is real thick. This was one of the first things I did many, 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 many years ago. And uh, as you can see, it's very thick and kind of ugly. But uh, it looked good. You know, it did the job. People liked it when I was doing public events. It looks pretty cool because everybody likes to see those bullets. You know, see the bullets sticking out at the bottom. That looks pretty cool. Um, anyway, lots of versions of these. And uh, like I said, look up the, those books, look up any pictures, um, and uh, I think it'll back up my theory that the, uh, the movies were bogus and they were using uh, the wrong equipment, even in the Mexico movies. Now, this is another one that you also saw in some Mexican movies, but you got to know what you're looking at. Um... Valentin de la Sierra. Uh, that's a movie that has a lot of this kind of stuff. It has a lot of the uniforms where they're wearing the... If you saw my review on my on my books, you will see that they had a lot of those double-breasted, uh, dark blue um, wool uniforms with the shakos. And they had uh, the other black... Um, cartridge belt that I just showed you and some of them had this one so this is an original Mexican for sure for sure Mexican either 1920s or later and if you look at the back it's very American cartridge belt style where you would adjust it from the back as opposed to the other black one that I showed you shoot stupid style you adjust it from the you buckle it from the front but the bullets are all along the back side of your caboose you know your lower back is kind of <laughs> it, yeah that was not really a great idea so adjusting the belt width from the back was of course a much better idea but uh I wanted to show you this. Now these straps don't come off from right here. They're riveted in, but you've got a smaller piece. And these don't have a pocket on the strap. But they also have the bayonet hanger right here, just like the shoot stripper. This would take uh, two. This would take two cartridges or two. Uh, strip clips and um, it also has 
poles here like the Americans. Um, I suppose you can put extra equipment in there as well, just like the American uh, 1910 and World War I, World War II. But uh, this one is original. And if you look again, look at the, uh, the way to hook up the belt in the front. Very, very, very U.S. style. And uh, just at a, a slightly different tangent, I do have a 1940s, 1950s um, Mexican made canteen that looks exactly like the World War II American canteen. So, um, and like I said, they did buy a lot of stuff uh, from American suppliers. So, this is the kind of stuff that I have. Um, it's kind of cool. It's a little bit uh, hard to find. And that's what all my little research ended up bringing me to. So, uh, that's it for now. Um, I'll see you guys hopefully in another video where I, I'm showing you some other stuff. Uh, some authentic stuff, some reproduction stuff. And uh, also some other books for you guys out there who are... Uh, are into reenacting or collecting or uh, just you like equipment like I do. So see you guys on the next one.